our goals this year is to grow more perennial food crops. This is in line with our longer term goal of creating a small suburban food forest with many, if not mostly, perennial crops. Of course, we already do grow some perennials, including blackberries, raspberries, honeyberries, grapes, strawberries, red vein sorrel, sage, oregano, chives, Egyptian walking onions, mint, rosemary, and dandelion. Though this is a great start, we want to grow even more perennials, because once established, they come back year after year with little effort, and thanks to their deep roots, often require less added nutrients and water than annuals. A recent inspiration to increase our efforts in this direction has been Eric Tonesmeyer and Jonathan Bates' book, Paradise Lot, Two Plant Geeks, One-Tenth of an Acre, and the Making of an Edible Garden Oasis in the City. The book describes Eric and Jonathan's journey from dreaming about growing a food forest to starting one on rented land, and finally to purchasing a house in the city with poor soil and transforming the yard into an edible garden oasis, consisting mostly of perennials. The fact that they did it on a small city plot in a climate similar to ours makes it all that much more of an inspiration to us. So today I thought I'd give an update on where we are in our journey to grow more perennial food crops and create an edible garden oasis. Back in November, I made a video in which I talked about eight new perennial food crops we were thinking of adding to the garden. Since reading Paradise Lot, and with your input, we've refined and expanded the list to include tree collards, Good King Henry, Sea Kale, French Sorrel, Jerusalem Artichokes, Asparagus, Rhubarb, Pawpaw Trees, and possibly one or two more types of fruit trees. Let's start with tree collards. We purchased three cuttings in late November. All three tree collards are doing well so far, though this one is growing much more quickly than the other two. We'll be growing the tree collards in these 10 gallon smart pots. Since they are not perennial in Zone 5, we'll be overwintering them indoors. We'll also be taking cuttings to start new plants every year, and we'll likely grow some as annuals as well. Another perennial green we'll be growing is Good King Henry, which is hardy to Zone 5. It can be a bit tricky to grow, because its seeds require a period of moist cold and fluctuating temperatures in order to germinate. It's best to start them outdoors very early in the spring, but I did try starting a few seeds in pots in one of my polytunnels this weekend. I figured that inside the polytunnels it's already the cloven of spring. I limited this experiment to just a few seeds because they are rare and there weren't many seeds included in the packet. Sea kale is another perennial green that can be difficult or at least slow to germinate. Fellow YouTube gardener Joe Feaser very generously and spontaneously sent us an incredible assortment of amazing seeds and I was especially excited to see sea kale seeds among them. Being impatient, I planted a few seeds right away in the grow room. For faster germination, I removed the corky exterior of the seeds first. To my surprise, one of the seeds appears to have already germinated, though I haven't ruled out the possibility that it could be from a seed that was in the worm castings used in the potting mix. Sea kale is only hardy to zone 6, so we're going to have to place cold frames over it in the winter. French sorrel is one of my favorite perennial greens. It has a lemony flavor, but also reminds me of Granny Smith apples. We grew French sorrel in the past, but I managed to kill it with overly enthusiastic mulching. We'll be planting these seeds in the spring, and I'll keep my mulching under control. The incredible package that Joe Feaser sent us also included Jerusalem artichokes, or sunchokes, packed in compost and rock dust. I've had them sitting in a bucket in an unheated area of the basement ever since receiving them. Correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but I think the sunchokes need to go into the ground in March. My wife and I both love asparagus, but we've never grown it. That's going to change this year. We haven't ordered our asparagus crowns yet, but we will soon. From the time I was born and through most of my childhood, we always had rhubarb growing in the yard and rhubarb strawberry pie and preserves on the table. For some reason though, my wife Karen and I have never grown it, but this year we'll be bringing back that tradition and we'll be planting rhubarb in the garden. A new addition to our list that was inspired by Paradise Lot is pawpaw trees. Pawpaws are the largest fruit native to the United States and are hardy to zone five. They shouldn't be confused with papayas, which are also sometimes called pawpaws. 
Pawpaw trees grow to about 30 feet tall, are very pest resistant, and two are required for pollination. They produce large, delicious, sweet, custard-like, tropical-flavored fruit. We may purchase our pawpaws from forestfarm.com, which is Jonathan Bates' company. Finally, we're considering at least one more fruit tree variety. I'm leaning towards Asian pear, and Karen wants peach. Knowing Karen will probably end up with peach trees, or both peach trees and Asian pear. We're hoping that adding these perennial food crops to our garden brings us another step closer to our own abundant, edible garden oasis in the suburbs. If you'd like to know more about what perennial vegetables you can grow in your area, please see the link to the Global Inventory of Perennial Vegetables in the description below. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.